Well, good morning. I'm reading today from the Gospel of our Lord and Savior, according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. And because I can, I added a second verse, a second passage from 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. Hear now these words, and let them come alive in you. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. And now from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give away all of my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest The greatest of these is love. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of love, we're grateful for your presence in our lives and for your presence here today. Speak and find us listening. Amen. Well, you know, I... I, I, I had a lot of stuff I was going to say, and it was all very, very wise and profound. And then I sat down at my computer, and that blank screen mocked me because I had no words at all. If you've noticed, for the last couple of weeks, I can't even return your emails. I just have no words at all. It's as if God said, nope, you're done. Next. But alas, here I find myself and grateful to be here. So let me start with the sign out front. Did you see that? Aloha, Pastor Meg. Thank you, Robin. Do you know what the word aloha actually really means? I thought I knew what it meant because I thought aloha meant both hello and goodbye in Hawaiian, the way bitta means please or you're welcome in German. And that made a lot of sense to me, being from a tourist state myself, for the license plates there to say the Aloha State. You know, hello and goodbye. But I was wrong. And my husband is listening. I was wrong. So how many of you know what the word aloha actually means? Okay, well, good, 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 good. (laughs) I don't feel so bad. It means love. The word aloha, it's the Hawaiian word for love. See, when Hawaiians greet one another, they say hello with love. And when they part, they leave one another with love. The coming And the going, the aloha's all the same. 
It's a cultural phenomenon in the islands. They call it the aloha spirit. It is the spirit of love. And when you get off the airport there, you notice it right away. Everyone has wide open and welcoming expressions. Everyone is patient and kind. At first I thought, well, of course everyone is nice. They're all on vacation. <laughs> or they're living in paradise. But it's more than that. It's more than that. It's a joyful generosity that is just undeniable. As followers of Jesus Christ, the spirit of love for us, it's more than a cultural phenomenon. It's a countercultural movement. It's a supernatural experience. It's a close encounter that leaves you forever changed. And, and you don't even have to leave your pew to get it. All you have to do is be wide open to it. Let down your guard and let it come. Allow it to fill you and don't stop it at what seems reasonable. No, let God's love lift you up and sweep you away. If you let it, if you let it, it'll, it'll well up inside your spirit until it overflows and it will splash on everyone around you. It will drip from your lips when you open your mouth and it will sparkle in your eyes when you behold another. If you let it, God's love will ooze out of all the cracked and broken places in your life and make you whole. God's aloha spirit is everywhere. Everywhere, all the time, blessing, restoring, and transforming ordinary earthbound hearts and ordinary churches into tiny islands of great love in a world that is sorely in need of safe harbor. There is a lot of love in this church. When I arrived here, you greeted me with aloha. And as I leave, that's what I carry in my heart. I know that you will welcome your next senior pastor with love and that you will go on to do great things together. Keep moving forward. Keep loving. You are doing God's work. Anytime there's a transition, there are bound to be questions. And if you don't know the answers, well, it's just human nature to assume the worst. But there's no hidden drama here. I simply believe that I have done what God called me here to do. And that I am now being asked to go and do likewise somewhere else. I, on the one hand, I'm surprised that our time together was so short. <laughs> Though, you know, Jesus only had three years with his disciples. But on the other hand, we accomplished an awful lot together. And if the time seemed to fly, it's only because we were having fun. In the end, I didn't come to this church to fill a position. I came to fulfill a purpose, and I believe that we've done so. I do have some folks I'd like to thank before I go, and I'm going to embarrass them, so I hope they'll forgive me. Sue Myers was the chair of my search committee and my pastoral relations committee, and she was there for me every single step of the way. From my first Sunday, when I was terrified to come out here and stand in front of you. And she came into my office all bright and sweet and full of sunshine and said, just be yourself. <laughs> She's been a good listener and a good friend. 
Greg Myers was chair of deacons throughout much of my ministry here, and I kept him on his toes. I don't know what I'd have done without him. Greg also teaches Sunday school and confirmation class and is a youth group leader. He's a wonderful role model for our kids and for us. He's a person of deep faith in whom the spirit of the Lord is pleased to dwell. And I'm honored to work with him. Phyllis Chase, where are you, Phyllis? I'm going to make you raise your hand. You can't see her unless she raises her hand. (laughs) Phyllis, you've been an inspiration to me. Phyllis wakes up every morning and quietly gives herself away in a hundred humble acts of Christian service. She loves up on people all day, and then she goes to sleep and wakes up and starts all over again. And she looks dainty, doesn't she? But I dare you to keep up with her. I want to be like Phyllis if I ever grow up. She's one of the most Christ-like people I've ever known. My partner in crime and dear friend, the anointed Reverend Robin Bird. What a gift you have been to me, to this church. I thank God for you and for every minute of our shared ministry. I expect great things from you. And the rest of our amazing ministry team, James and Leanne and the Reverend Joanne Meyer and Debbie and Nancy, who saves my life every day. Robin's thinking she saves my life every day. (laughs) Dean's thinking he saves my life every day. It takes a lot of people to save a pastor's life. I've never worked with a finer group of people. I love them. It has been a real pleasure. How long do we have? I've only got a ream of people left. (laughs) Never mind. Even if I called you all by name, I could never begin to tell you what you have meant to me and how much I've come to love you. You are indelibly etched on my heart, woven into the fiber of my being, and you will stay there, and you will make me better than I was before. See, coming or going, the love is the same. So aloha, my friends, and amen.